Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going to dive into one of the most crucial aspects of any structural analysis exercise, reviewing the output. It's not about confirming that the analysis itself is correct. That's already taken care of by the software. Instead, it's about double-checking the structural designer's input to ensure that the right model has been used and that the applied loads are correct. First and foremost, let's talk about program defaults. Many software programs come with default values for certain input data, such as support fixity and restraint conditions. These time-saving values are meant to streamline your workflow, but it's essential to double-check if they're suitable for your specific project. So ask yourself, are the default conditions appropriate for the physical details and the loading of the frame? Make sure to adjust any values that don't quite fit the bill. Next up, let's examine the loads you've applied. By viewing them graphically, you can quickly identify any potential issues. Be on the lookout for elements without load or loads that seem out of proportion compared to others. Also, double-check that the loads are applied in the correct orientation. Moving on to the deflected form, ask yourself, does the structure's deflection match your expectations? Is the overall deflection within the expected range? This step is crucial in making sure your model is behaving as it should. Turning our attention to the bending moment diagram, does it resemble what you expected? Are there moments shown where releases would be more appropriate? And does the overall envelope on a member align with a simple approach, like shown, uniformly distributed load times a certain length squared over 8 or distributed load time length over 4? Moving on to reactions. When it comes to reactions, it's time to break out the calculator. By hand, verify that the total reactions in the output both vertically and horizontally, match the applied loads. Check if the reactions for different unfactored load cases differ by orders of magnitude and ensure that the load distribution to the supports is as expected. Now, let's consider the spring stiffness values used in your analysis. Are they suitable for the members as designed? This step is vital in ensuring that your model accurately represents the real-world behavior of your structure. Finally, if you're working with a simply supported truss carrying a uniformly distributed load, check if the maximum core forces equate the uniformly distributed load times, a length squared over 8, divided by the depth of the truss. Verify if the vertical component of the end internal member matches the vertical end reaction and confirm that the displacements are of the correct form and order. Also, take a look at your truss's analysis model. Is one end free to move longitudinally? Two redundant members at the ends of the truss attract load or have they been released? And there you have it. By carefully reviewing each of these aspects, you can ensure that you've used the most appropriate structural model and that your applied loads are spot on. Remember, when using proven software, the analysis itself will be correct. It's your input that needs to be double-checked. So keep these points in mind the next time you perform a structural analysis, and you'll be well on your way to success. Thanks for tuning in today. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more insightful tips and tricks. Until next time.